Buenas uh, noches. So welcome. Uh, welcome um, to tonight's presentation. There are a couple of ways that you can participate this evening. First, for anybody that is needing the interpretation, uh, I want to let you know um, how to use that. So on the bottom of the screen, uh, you can click on the interpretation uh, function, and then if you can choose you can choose to have it in Spanish if that is what you are needing. And we have a in live interpreter on the line um, who will be communicating the presentation in Spanish while muting all other audio. Um, if you have a question at any point during the presentation, you can use the Q&A function uh, at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can ask a question that way, or you can also um, just ask a question in the chat function. Um, so you'll see that also on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and if you would like to ask a question or make a comment using audio, um, just use the raise hand feature and I'll be able to unmute you so that you can ask your question or make your comment to uh, the presenters tonight uh, using your microphone. And I think that covers everything. So Stacy, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, great. Thank you, Francesca. I appreciate that. And again, welcome everyone to the, um, to the presentation, Allen Boulevard, 92nd Avenue, Shared Use Pathway. Next slide, please. So tonight, this is our agenda. We'll be talking about project goals, existing conditions, design alternatives, preferred design alternative that has been selected, community engagement process and what that looks like, um, or what that looked like, the project schedule, and then question and answers or Q&A at the end. So project goals for this particular project, Allen Boulevard, 92nd Avenue Shared Use Pathway, was really to fill the gap in the Fano Creek Trail along the south side or one side of Allen Boulevard between Shoals Ferry and 92nd Avenue. This is also known as segment number five of the Fano Creek Trail. So along with this um, particular goal, there's also a couple of intersection improvements at Allen Boulevard and Shoals Ferry Road, as well as intersection improvements at Allen Boulevard and 92nd Avenue. Storm drainage upgrades, landscaping, and then path lighting. Again, the project area is along Southwest Allen Boulevard from Shoals Ferry Road to Allen 92nd. In the beginning of this project, actually I think it was the summer of 2019, so a year ago now, um, we began the outreach to the neighborhood and or the neighboring businesses that are adjacent to the project site. And what that looked like was going out and talking to folks, letting them know that this would be a project that would be happening in their area adjacent to their business and or residents. And then talking to them a little bit about how they could also be involved, which is how we um, organized the stakeholder advisory committee. So I will talk a little bit more about that later, but on the stakeholder advisory committee, we had property owners. We also had a representative from the traffic commission, from the bicycle advisory committee, from the neighborhood advisory committee, which is the Denny Whitford Raleigh West Mac, somebody from um, THPRD, our Twalton Hills Parks and Recreation District, Washington County, and then also um, our consultants and our city staff as well. So again, the project goal really is to connect this trail. So as you can see on this slide, you can see Allen Boulevard here. You can see where the existing trail is on the right side of your screen. And then also where there's an existing trail on the left side of your screen with a gap that's in the middle there. And so what we wanted to do is we really wanted to take a look at this particular corridor and see how we can improve the safety here so we can get folks from one side of the trail to the next. All right, good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Travis Smith, work with the city of Beaverton. I'm the project manager. Um, before we jump into the design, the design alternatives, as well as the preferred design that we're uh, moving forward with, I just want to give a little bit of context again, um, as far as where we're at in the city. So imagine uh, most of you viewing are very familiar with this, but um, again, that's the, the same site plan 
uh, along the, the western side of that uh, site plan there, you'll see uh, Shoals Ferry Road kind of running north and south diagonally. That's Allen Boulevard again, running uh, kind of horizontally through the center of that site plan. And then on the right side, running north-south is 92nd Avenue. And then if you take a look at the two pictures there, the one on the, the top right, um, you get a view looking, um, or really standing directly in the center of uh, Allen Avenue facing east, looking towards 92nd Avenue. So that's, that's pretty well mid-block between those two intersections. A um, couple of things to point out there before we again look at the design. Um, there is no, uh, currently no pathway, no sidewalk on the south side of that road, no bike lanes. Um, and right now you will see that the, uh, the only um, pathway through there, really the only sidewalk or any uh, kind of travel way for pedestrians or bicyclists is that a detached sidewalk on the north side, the left side of that picture there, uh, which is a six foot wide sidewalk. Um, taking a look on the, the picture below that, uh, you would be standing in 92nd Avenue looking north uh, to the right side of that picture, kind of in that um, little bit shaded area, is the uh, one termination point for Fennel Creek Trail. So that's where the trail currently stops. That's where we'll be connecting into with this project. And from that location, uh, people typically walking through the project would venture north, uh, finding their way to that sidewalk that's on the uh, previous picture. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to our designer who's going to run through the, again, through the design alternatives, kind of the pros and cons that we developed as well as the um, preferred alternative. Thanks, Travis. And again, I'm Ben Austin with HHPR working on the design. So we're gonna to talk tonight about uh, the three design alternatives that uh, the team considered, uh, the pros and cons of those alternatives, and then uh, kind of the preferred alternative and how we went that down. So the three alternatives that we evaluated the first alternative is a, a trail along the south side of Allen between Shoals Ferry and 92nd. The second alternative is another trail along the south side, but with a roundabout at the 92nd and Allen intersection. And then the third al alternative is a trail along the north side of Allen. So we'll get into those in a little bit more detail. So this is the first alternative. This is a multi-use path along, and I will point here to help uh, follow along. This is a multi-use path along the south side of Allen Boulevard, the trail users would come up to the intersection and cross along the south side, travel down to the 92nd intersection, and then there'd be a mid-block crossing right here on the corner with a, a rapid flash beacon or a hawk signal that they would cross the intersection and then continue on on the trail. This is alternative one. The, uh, the pros of this alternative was that it really is the shortest path in connecting this, this trail. It provides um, a buffered trail with a enhanced crossing like an RFB or a Hawk at the 92nd and Allen intersection. It minimizes some of the right-of-way impacts, uh, particularly on the east end of the project, um, and it minimizes the amount of pavement that's disturbed, the amount of fold up reconstruction of pavement out along the corridor. Some of the cons of this alternative are that it doesn't address the inadequate uh, center line radius at the 92nd Allen intersection. That's kind of a fancy way of saying the tight curve there at 92nd and Allen. Um, and it doesn't address the, the um, potentially higher vehicle speeds at that corner um, with the crossing right there on the corner. And then lastly, uh, driveways along the south side of Allen between Shoals Ferry and 92nd experience problems turning left out of their driveways and this doesn't address any of that. The um, construction cost estimate for this alternative was 1.5 to 1.7 million. The second alternative that we looked at was a path along the south side with a roundabout. So again, similar to the other option, and I'll use the pointer here, uh, users on the trail would come up, they'd cross along the south side of the intersection, travel along the south side of Allen, and then travel across the southern leg of the roundabout and out onto the trail, and this would also have uh, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon on it to help enhance that crossing. The pros and cons of this alternative, uh, again, similar to the first alternative, it's the shortest route in connecting the trail. Um, however, this alternative provides a solution for that inadequate uh, radius there, the tight corner, by providing the roundabout. Uh, it will slow vehicles on approach to the crossing uh, as it, at the roundabout there. It provides good sight distance for that approach for vehicles approaching the crossing. Uh, it increases the safety with the elimination of some of the left turns out of driveways along the south side. It, and that's that vehicles can now make a right turn out of their driveway and turn around in the roundabout. 
Uh, and then lastly, in the pros, it kind of creates a signature feature as you enter into the city of Beaverton uh, on the 92nd um, Allen Boulevard corridor. And the cons of this option are that it has an increased uh, right-of-way impact, particularly on the east end. The size of the roundabout uh, requires the city to acquire more right-of-way. Uh, it partially restricts larger trucks. We identify a WB67 as one of those larger trucks. That's a truck and large truck and trailer combination um, uh, from making all the movements to the intersection, but it does accommodate some trucks. And it increases the uh, amount of pavement that needs to be reconstructed out there. Uh, and it's the most expensive option. The construction cost estimate for this option is between 1.8 and 2.1 million. And the third and final alternative we looked at was a multi-use path along the north side of Allen Boulevard. So again, following my cursor here, if you came up uh, on the trail from the, from the south, you'd cross either on the south or east legs in order to cross twice along the Allen Shoals Ferry intersection to get along the north side of the road. And then there'd be a crossing on the north leg of 92nd and back around to the trail. The pros of this op option are that the trail crossing at Southwest Allen occurs at a signalized intersection. So both of those crossing points you're waiting for uh, vehicles to come to a stop and then you're using the traffic light to stop to cross. Uh, it is good sight distance uh, for the trail crossings in all those locations. Some of the cons of this alternative is that uh, in order to fit it in on the north side of the road, it's a 14 foot wide curb tight trail. That means there's no landscape trip strip between the trail uh, and the roadway. And um, this actually doesn't meet national guidance uh, for separated bike facility. Uh, and then it doesn't provide any sidewalk connectivity along the south side of Allen Boulevard between Shoals Ferry and 92nd. Uh, the crossing time may be increased because you're now waiting at the signal at Shoals Ferry and Allen for two legs of the crossing. Uh, and then there's some additional impacts to overhead utilities that exist along the north side of Allen Boulevard, and it has some potential impacts to the Bur Burgerville parking lot and may require more extensive retaining walls to, to remedy those. The cost of this uh, alternative is between 1.5 and 1.7 million. The preferred alternative design was, was option two that I spoke of, that is uh, the multi-use path along the south side of Allen Boulevard and a roundabout at the Allen 92nd intersection. Uh, this, this alternative addresses the substandard curve, as we discussed. It addresses current issues um, with northbound vehicles on 92nd being unclear in their intention uh, as to whether they're continuing on 92nd or turning onto Allen. And I'm going to skip forward here just for a second to explain that today with the curve here. It's very challenging for a pedestrian crossing to understand whether a vehicle is heading straight on 92nd or is making the turn onto Allen. And the roundabout helps address that, that issue. Uh, it creates a more formal intersection for the trail crossing rather than alternative one, which is more of a mid-block crossing. And it address, addresses access in and out of driveways along the, uh, Allen Boulevard by allowing the U-turns. So again, these driveways along here can now come and turn around the roundabout if they wanted to go the other direction, uh, affording them more options, more safe options for, for accessing a parcel. So what you see here is a rendering of uh, the preferred alternative and recommended plan. It includes the new signalized intersection at Shoals Ferry and Allen. This is a replacement of the existing signal, uh, widening and modification of the turn lanes to come into a new roundabout at 92nd and Allen, and the multi-use path running along the south side of the road with a crossing and a rectangular rapid flash beacon on the 92nd leg to reconnect to the trail. And with that, I'll turn it over to Stacy to talk about the community engagement process. Okay, thanks so much. Great job, Ben. Great job, Travis. Um, so the community engagement process, um, as I had mentioned earlier on in the presentation, we had um, we spoke with the the neighborhood, the, neighbor, the neighborhood, and the um, residents who were adjacent to the property, and also the businesses. Um, we went out on foot and talked with folks. We also hand delivered a letter. We also mailed a letter to the property owners, um, and then we had decided to create a stakeholder advisory committee. And the stakeholder advisory committee again comprised of adjacent property owners and or business owners. Um, Twelfth and Hills Park and Recreation District, a representative from the Bicycle Advisory Committee, the Traffic Commission, 
and then also um, the Neighborhood Advisory Committee or the Denny Whitford Raleigh West NAC. And we also had folks um, from city, city staff, city of Beaverton, um, engineering, and then also our core team that's here today presenting. And so um, with that, we had a meeting um, that was in, um, our first meeting was in November um, of 2019. And then in December, um, the uh, Stakeholder Advisory Committee voted to go ahead and move forward with design on option two, which was the preferred design for the roundabout. And then in January, um, we went around and visited all the apartments that are also adjacent to this project. And there were quite a few different apartment complexes just to make sure that we were able to get this information out to the residents there and folks who live there um, so that they could also join in on this process. We were able to do a presentation at the Bicycle Advisory Committee uh, HHPR presented this particular project to the Bicycle Advisory Committee to talk about, you know, what the different alternatives were and to just kind of explain the project. Um, we also, as a project team, went to the Traffic Commission where the consultants did a wonderful job giving a presentation on this, this project as well and um, kind of talked about the different alternatives and sort of what the next steps might be. And then, um, and that was in March, March of 2020 is when we went to the Traffic Commission. And then also doing um, some council briefings early on just to make sure that city council also was able to uh, be involved in this process as a capital project. Um, in June of 2020, we had the second stakeholder advisory committee meeting, and that was more of a virtual blog format. Um, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we were unable to have in-person meetings. Um, so we have a virtual platform here today to share with everyone. Um, mostly because we can't have an in-person open house at this time. So that's why it's so important and we're so thankful that people are here this evening and listening to this presentation and also to ask questions that you might need some answers to. So if we can go ahead and scroll to the virtual open house. So what we're gonna do now is sort of take you to, if you go to the city of Beaverton website or if you go to beavertonoregon.gov, forward slash shared use path there at the very top there that we highlighted it will take you to this capital project which is the capital project page it gives you all the information here project description and you'll see virtual open house and you'll click that link great job thanks <laughs> you'll click that link and it will take you to the virtual open house platform now this is open tonight August 12th through Friday, August 28th. So that is more than two weeks time and we'd love to have your feedback. So we're gonna go ahead and just scroll through this a little bit to talk a little bit about what this platform is. And so it talks about how to use this virtual open house, gives you the project background, which is something that we did talk about a little bit today. Um, the shared use path is actually listed as a high priority in the city of Beaverton active transportation plan that was adopted in February of 2018. And it does fill a critical gap in the Fano Creek Trail and strongly supported by THPRD. Um, also, this project is funded through different sources. Talks about the project goals, which we talked about at the beginning of the project. Again, the project area. Some existing conditions uh, photos, which Travis was kind of explaining a little bit earlier this evening. And so this just gives you kind of a snapshot or an overview of sort of like what the conditions are. And as you'll see the folks biking, that's where they bike on the very south side of Allen Boulevard to get from one end of the trail to the next, because sometimes it is really the shortest route. They don't have to cross um, three legs. And then more existing conditions here where the gap is um, for that Fano Creek Trail. And then the pro proposed design alternatives. So we had the three options, remember that Ben went over. Option one, the trail on the south side, that gives a description, a nice paragraph of what that actually means. And then as you keep going, it'll talk about the estimated construction cost, some of the pros and cons of option number one. You can also click on, it says download PDF. There's a button underneath that photo. And so you can click on that button there and it will take you to an enlarged graphic so that you can look at it more closely. 
And then option two, of course, trail on the south side with the roundabout. Same kind of information that we went over today. And then the pros and the cons, option number three as well. Yep. And then as we get down towards the bottom here, it talks about the preferred alternative, which is option number two, trail on the south side with the roundabout. And it kind of gives um, you know, some of the reasons on why this is the preferred alternative. And you'll notice that there's a really awesome video, and we talked about showing this this evening, but sometimes these sort of videos are tricky because we're on a virtual platform and then we go inside another virtual platform. So you all can take a look at this um, rendering video. It's really great. HHPR did a nice job putting this together so go ahead and take a look at that and then again a flat view um, something that Jimmy had talked about or Ben had talked about in the um, during the preferred options and then the project schedule which actually Travis will go over here very soon and then submitting feedback which is actually the most important of this whole thing so it gives you a recap of kind of our presentation this evening and this is a recorded presentation so you're more than welcome to listen to it over and over again as I know you will because it's so exciting and also that you can you can go ahead and look at the um, the material here that we've provided and then you can go to the submit feedback button and you'll click that and it will take you right to a survey where you can provide your information if you'd like us to contact you, as well as any questions, comments, or concerns that you might have. Thank you, Ben. And Travis, would you like to go over the um, project schedule? Yes, yeah, let's skip to that slide. All right. Um, so at this point in the design, our uh, consultants have recently finished what we call 60% design plans. Um, so we're well into the design process. That 60% design plans are, are developing our preferred alternative. Um, but really, we're kind of midway through design development, which we anticipate to go extend through sometime into early to, to mid next spring. Um, so August 2020 through March 2021 is what we're, what we're aiming at with that. Uh, simultaneously, we're also going to be starting the, the uh, right-of-way acquisition process, which we'll be talking to neighboring property owners, which is probably of interest for some of you, um, discussing the, the needs both as far as uh, property acquisition as well as temporary construction easements. So that, that process will start here very soon. Um, we're hoping, uh, planning towards uh, construction beginning. Um, sh shortly after the design process is wrapped up with uh, bidding sometime mid to late spring construction starting in the ideal uh, construction season which would be uh, early summer through early fall um, so we anticipate construction lasting summer about three to five months if i remember correctly uh, ben you can correct that later um, if that's incorrect and that's that's about where we're at at this point um, so i think at this point we're turning it back to francisca um, to open it up for questions is that correct All right, well, if there are any questions, this is the opportunity to ask them. I'll be happy to pose them to the full panel. Um, at this particular juncture, I don't see any questions in either the Q&A or in the chat, um, though I, we do have a participant that would like to talk. All right, so Gina and Charles, uh, you are unmuted. Gina and Charles, I think you you might still be on. I think you need to unmute yourself. We've given you the permission to talk. Gina and Charles, if you can hear this, um, please type in the chat that 
you are there. Hello? Hello. Trying. Uh, I am here. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we can hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. I was wondering if when the, um, if I'm able to turn left out of our driveway, if the traffic's not too bad, or is there going to be some sort of um, block like a meridian or something rather that will keep me from turning. Um, and then um, I was also wondering about what anyone might think of is going to be happening to the two large ponderosa pines. That's all. And do you want to reply to the, um, the driveway? Yeah, there isn't a plan at this point to put up a barrier and restriction. It, the ability to make the U-turn is more of a, um, a user preference and, and a way to make a safer turn, particularly during peak hours. Okay. And, and is, as for the trees, I think we need to take a closer look. The goal is to preserve as many of the large trees as possible, but there is some widening on that corner. Mm -hmm. We'll just see how that goes. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. I think that's all our questions at this point. Great. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we have a question in span. Well, it's, it's actually not a question, it's a comment. Uh, we, in Spanish, we have individuals who live on the curve and they are asking that when we are undergoing construction um, to please not block their driveway with signs because they will not be able to see when we enter when they enter or exit their house um, but there is another question about how uh, how this will impact Burgerville traffic or how, how you will plan this with Burgerville traffic. Does anybody want to take that question? I'll, I'll jump in on the first comment, um, just to say that during construction, uh, we, will, we, will, we will be in communication with all of the neighbors and anything like that that comes up, if there's any kind of um, issue or interference, just, just let us know as well. Um, we, we will continue to communicate with you up until and through construction. Um, so that's a good comment. And those are things that we want to be very mindful of as well to minimize the impacts during construction. And I will let uh, Ben jump in on the, uh, the second, the Burgerville uh, related question there. Yeah, so I, I don't, I'm not sure if the question is about uh, during construction or post construction, but I'll answer for both. So post construction access will remain the same as it is um, today. There is, um, in the, if we just go back to a drawing of it, there is more, uh, there'll be more, more lanes for crossing Allen. We're kind of reallocating the space better to make more, more lanes here. So it should help with some of the backup that's particularly that's experienced today when there's high volume of um, traffic at Burgerville, should help out there. Um, but no real change to the, to the type of access that's there today. Under construction, um, the improvements will be staged. The goal will be to maintain access uh, to Burgerville at all times. There will be some time uh, when the roundabout's being constructed, the traffic may be diverted from one end or the other to, um, to facilitate that construction, but access will be maintained to all the businesses during construction. Great, thanks, Ben. Uh, all right. Gina and Charles, I see that you would like to ask another question or make another comment. Feel free to unmute yourself. I think I did. Perfect. We can hear you. Randy, I just want to say hi to you. Do you remember me from the substation? <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, my yes. goodness. Well, great. <laughs> there. This is great. Yes. I guess my, my one question I had is just concerning the, uh, the property on the corner you know, where it has all those bushes and stuff, was any consideration made to make like a berm or some plantings to kind of give them 
some degree of the privacy that they have now, instead of just being all just open where, you know, right now they kind of have a nice little spot in the front yard where, you know, they can kind of, you know, just hang out and not have the traffic going right by their house. Is there any thing going on or thoughts of that that you know of, Ben? Yeah, so I believe you're talking, Charles, about this area right here. If you can see my cursor on the the plan, yes. also uh -huh. right here. So, you know, in this widening, and that's one of the the disadvantages of this option is that there is more widening um, at this intersection. The current plan um, is to put a fence along the back of the sidewalk, um, and okay. that kind of is the improvements within the right of way. There's landscaping in 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 this area and some stormwater management stuff, but uh, nothing is currently planned along the back. The, the city's right away will stop at the back of sidewalk there and that will remain private property behind. Um, there will be a right away acquisition process for that area that's part of their yard today. Um, and so those types of discussions about screening would be a, you know, an appropriate discussion during that right away process. And where's this fence that you're right, talking right about? Along the, right, around yeah, right along the back of the sidewalk just to kind of create some separations okay. you know, with trail users uh, you know leaving the roadway and to, to um, uh, there's there's also a little bit of a grade difference here so to help make sure people don't end up down in, in the adjacent yard. So it would be like a six foot cedar solid fence? A uh, type of fence is still being worked out as part of the design process. Okay. Um, but given your connection to those properties, I'm sure we'll be talking to you about it as well. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Chuck. It's nice to, to hear your voice. I miss those sandwiches. Good seeing you as well. Can you guys see us or just hear us? It's just, we can just hear you. It's okay. the function of webinar. So That's probably I'll, just I'll well. definitely have to, to stop into the substation. Okay. <laughs> Take care. All right, so we have one more question. So uh, the question is, uh, the individual said, I noticed that in all of these options, the left turn lane on Allen heading east has been moved closer to the pedestrian crossing. Could you talk about why that change was made? I was also curious about if during the overhaul of this intersection, Allen and Shoals, any further pedestrian improvements are being considered, things like centerline hardening. What was the last part? Things like uh, centerline? Hardening. Okay. Um, I'm not uh, completely sure about the eastbound left. And Travis, if you understand that, feel free to jump in. Uh, the There is a dedicated right today that's going to become a through right. Um, but there's still two eastbound lanes on Allen and then the left turn lane. Uh, and then two westbound lanes on on the west side of the intersection here. Um, as for improvements at the intersection, we are upgrading the ADA ramps and getting rid of the island that's currently out here today to help facilitate this crossing. Uh, but there's no significant uh, ADA improvements at the intersection. Really the two main functions um, of the project are the reconnecting the shared use path and then replacing a, a signal that's at the end of its useful life. And I guess by 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 way of it's not really a, a a capacity or a functional upgrade at the intersection. It's more of a uh, just a replacement of the signal. Great, thank you. Do we have any other questions from the audience at this time? Okay, great. Well, I will go ahead and uh, put in the chat uh, the contact information for Stacy Reve if you do have any further follow up questions. Um, and I'll turn it back to Stacy at this time so she can uh, just go over again the open house and submitting feedback and next steps. Okay, thank you, friend. Francisca. So as you go to the City of Beaverton webpage or put in beavertonoregon.gov uh, forward slash shared use path, it will take you to a webpage for this project and then you will go to the virtual open house. 
um, and click on that link and then it will take you to a platform so that you're able to um, go ahead and submit your feedback. Remember to scroll all the way down to the bottom um, where there is a button to submit feedback and there's a survey that it will take you to and then just let us know if you'd like us to um, if you'd like us to uh, contact you. Perfect. Well, does, does anybody uh, on the of any of the presenters have any final thoughts or comments that they would like to make before we wrap up tonight? I just want to thank again everybody uh, for attending this evening. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us tonight and hear about this this uh, this project and this opportunity. Uh, comment from the audience. Thank you for your time and your efforts. Thank you so much again for being here. Well, the recording of tonight's session will be available online. Uh, feel free to let folks know um, that perhaps weren't able to be here this evening, that they can watch it for themselves and, and definitely let folks know, let neighbors know to visit the virtual open house and provide feedback so that we can incorporate that going forward. But thank you everyone for being here and have a great evening.